Godzilla is probably the most recognizable pop culture monster in history. This radioactive lizard has been around for generations, which also means that he's been through many different iterations. In 2014, Legendary would introduce us to their own version of Godzilla, and this iteration would attempt to ground many aspects of his character, such as his power set, behavior, and appearance. Let's take a look at Godzilla 2014 and analyze all the art that helped craft this iconic monster. designing Godzilla for the film, they did at some point consider using his original design. The version of the look we see in the original Godzilla films. These retro designs for Godzilla do show that the creative team did at least try to honor and stay true to the legacy of the character. And based off some concepts, you can see that the more traditional design can be terrifying if done right. However, they ended up not using these looks because they did not match with the film's grounded tone. This Godzilla design was stated to be too cute and cartoony to be taken seriously, especially in a darker film such as this one. Due to this, they began to look at ways to make Godzilla terrifying while also staying true to his original appearance. Working closely with Toho, who were in charge of approving Godzilla's final appearance, the production team were dead set on formulating a more grounded design for the character. Many of the initial designs for Godzilla embraced a more dinosaur or T-Rex-like look. If you are a long-time Godzilla fan, then these designs may trigger your PTSD as these harken back to the tri-star depiction of the character, Zilla, who appeared in the American adaptation. A version so despised that they rebranded him as a different character entirely and killed him in Godzilla Final Wars. It's clear that they were not going to embrace a T-Rex design ever again. Later Godzilla designs now tried to find a middle ground between realism and the original design. At this point, you start to see Godzilla's design begin to appear a lot closer to the final look. He still appears like a more realistic dinosaur, but it's been toned down and a lot more original elements have been brought in. The creative team took a look at animals like vultures, eagles, bears, dogs, and British people to help craft the face, which they wanted to be more square and angular, more of an angry look but still very expressive, as Gareth Edwards wanted Godzilla's face to show clear emotion. Despite this approach, some faces were designed to be more rounded, similar to the original design. In fact, these versions of Godzilla's head appears to be a more realistic interpretation of how the original Godzilla would look in this universe. Some concepts took inspiration from different types of life, specifically sea life, as Godzilla here appears like some kind of giant fish, which is a very original and unique design choice. Godzilla's body also went through some changes. Some concepts had him standing upright, similar to the original version. However, as the design progressed, the character began to lean more and more. In terms of how they eventually landed on the final look, artist Andrew Baker served as a massive creative influence for the final design. Eventually, after several concepts, the final look for the character would be created. Instead of using a pre-existing Godzilla villain for the first film, they instead decided to create original monsters, Rock Muto and Pterodactyl. Both monsters were meant to test different aspects of Godzilla's skill. Rock Muto in particular was heavily considered early on, as you can see him in several pieces of concept art. However, later in the film's production, the creative team would decide to merge both creatures into one creating the Mutos we see in the film. 
these two prototype monsters may have been cut, but the creative team still included a fun easter egg referencing Rock Muto in the Godzilla teaser trailer. After merging both characters into one, the production team still had the task of formulating how this new kaiju would look. The very early approaches to the Mutos looked very different from the one we see in the film. The Muto here looks like some kind of lizard-like creature with large fangs and sharp jagged teeth. Early on during the film's development, the male Muto in the film would eventually enter a cocoon and burst out with a set of wings. And the same seemed to be true for this version of the creature, as you can see it now, with sizable dragon-like wings, which makes this version of the Muto even more dangerous. Another Muto design takes a very different approach to the look, which embraces something a bit more fantastical and demon-like, showing that early on, the creative team had a lot of fun creating and experimenting with some really out there concepts. The reason these designs weren't used is simply because they did not fit with the envisioning Gareth Edwards had for these creatures. When designing the Mutos, the creative team took inspiration from many iconic film monsters to help inform the design, such as a T-Rex, a Xenomorph, King Kong, Jaws, and many others. They wanted the Mutos to be fast and agile, but also powerful enough to face the King of Monsters. So initially, Gareth Edwards suggested that the Mutos should be modeled after crustaceans like crabs, leading to many crab-like designs, especially this one, which even features a claw. However, the creative team were against this idea, as they believed that it wasn't scary enough to be a Godzilla villain. Due to this, they looked at other real-world influences in order to make the Mutos scarier, and eventually, they would land on insects as the perfect creature to use. They took inspiration from arachnids and beetles, but also mixed in elements of mammals to create a strange hybrid. This approach of combining both insects and mammals together would help create some of the creepiest and unsettling creature designs in a Godzilla film. Some designs weren't exactly insect-like, but did still borrow several elements from one to form many other unique designs that appear sort of demonic. There were a couple more pieces of Muto concept art, however, it's important to know that during the later stages of the character's development, the creative team already had a good idea on how the creature would look, and many of these concepts were never going to be considered. The final Muto design I'm referring to is this one, which essentially represents the final look they were going for. However, there is some slight differences with the appearance that are very noticeable. However, as the film continued to develop, these Muto designs would undergo several more tweaks until it eventually evolved into the Muto design we all know. It's sad that many of these concepts could not make it into the final film, but it's always nice to look back at the unused ideas and see the many directions this film could have went.